it's now time for our announcements. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath once again. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord? Yes. I'm glad uh, to see all of you or, uh, inside the house as we worship and glorify our God. And so before we make the announcements, let's have a word of prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, God, we are thankful. We come to you in joy and gladness, Father, that we can worship you. You alone, you are God, and there's none like you. Help us, O oh Father, as we uh, are in your presence, God, to have reverence before you. Speak to our, mind, uh, speak to our minds and our hearts, O oh God, uh, that your children may be blessed. And we commit our service uh, into the able hand, O oh Father, that your, that your Holy Spirit and your guardian angels, O oh God, uh, may uh, cover us and take us through out this service. In Jesus' name, we pray and believe. I hope you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving day. Even yes, as we are still uh, in the Thanksgiving mood, we have plenty of reasons uh, to thank our God and to worship Him. And so this Sabbath morning, I want to welcome all of us into today's worship, that you may be blessed as we prepare our hearts uh, that the Lord is going to speak to us through his servant. Also, I want to welcome all the visitors that are visiting with us for the very first time. If you are a visitor, you are most welcome to worship with us this Sabbath and feel uh, if you are around Wichita, uh, you know, for the coming days, months, and weeks, let Three Angels Seventh Day SDA Church be your place of worship. So welcome you all into that. And also just a reminder into our bulletins. So today we have our Vespers at 6 p.m. All of us are welcome to join uh, via Zoom. There's no driving to church. So just at 6 p.m., just tune in so that we can worship and fellowship together. Also, uh, also as a reminder uh, to our visitors we have our we have midweek uh, prayers and fellowship especially on man, uh, on wednesday uh, between 6 p.m no yeah between 7 p.m and 8 p.m we have midweek prayer meeting as well we have in the swahili uh midweek prayers between 5 p.m and 6 30 p.m all of us are most welcome to join in those uh, meetings. As well, uh, on Fridays, between 5 and 6 p.m., we have the Adventist Youth Class. They are welcoming the Sabbath at that particular time. And this is, no, it, it's, this is a weekly uh, worship that we welcome as young people, we welcome the Sabbath. And all of us, are welcome to join the young people in welcoming the Sabbath. To bring to your attention that on December 4th, that is the following Sabbath, next Sabbath, there will be no fellowship meal due to the reasons indicated in the bulletin. Also, in December 11th, it's a reminder uh, that that is the deadline to sign up for, uh, to order devotional books. I remember last Sabbath, uh, Mrs. Elaine, uh, uh, Mrs. Elaine Machin uh, announced that we need to, you know, to send in a request for the devotionals. So if you need a devotional book, kindly uh, contact Mrs. Elaine Machin that you may uh, reserve an order. Together with us, with that, uh, for the weekly fellowship meals, as we remember, there's no particular fellowship team uh, that has been you know, scheduled uh, to, 
to conduct or to, uh, to take care of the weekly fellowships. All of us are welcome. Uh, for those who want to join in the fellowship meal right after the divine service. So we enter into the fellowship hall where we have the fellowship meals. Everyone is welcome to join. And as a reminder is that you know, after we are done with the meals, it's a, it's, it's a request that we all participate. You now those who are taking part in the fellowship meal participate in the cleaning uh, of the items and rearrange the tables and leave them the way we found them. I think that's the end of our of the announcements today. And before I leave, I'll uh, welcome uh, Brother Dan Tierney uh, for an announcement. And may we have a wonderful and blessed Sabbath. Can I have that slide up? Today's sermon is gonna be a little different than the usual sermon because you guys are gonna help give it. What we're gonna to do today is called a testimony, a testimony meeting. And I didn't copy that on the thing, so I have to read it from up here. The testimony. <laughs> let me get here. The testimony meeting may be considered the most precious of all meetings. What deep and grave importance is attached to these little assemblies? Jesus Christ has paid the ransom money of His own blood for their souls, and He is in the midst of them when they meet to worship God. The Majesty of Heaven identifies His interests with those of the believers, however humble may be their circumstances. And wherever they are privileged to meet together, it is appropriate that they speak often one to another, giving utterance to the gratitude and love that results from thinking upon the name of the Lord. Thus shall God be glorified as he hearkens and hears, and the testimony meeting will be considered the most precious of all meetings. So what is the testimony meeting? A meeting where everybody gives testimonies. That's you guys. And so today we're going to have a testimony meeting. And I've got things I can say if, if it slows down, but I would prefer not to say them because I want to hear your testimonies. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, over here on the uh, this pew over here. If you have a testimony, come over to this pew over here. Just go around and come over here. And then as, as somebody gets close to finishing, you can come up here and sit, sit on the, the uh, stage. And then uh, when they're done, you can come up and give your testimony. So, and what are we talking about today? What's the sermon title? Thank God. So today's testimony is specifically geared around what are you thankful for? So if you have something you're thankful for, uh, feel free to come up and give a short testimony. And, and um, so I've, I've, got, I've got a little pad here. I'm going to leave right here. It says what to take. It says your first name. So give your name because there's a lot of new people here. So everybody can know who you are, uh, what you're thankful for. And then optionally, you can give a, a short st story if it's appropriate. And then if you have a scripture that, you, that helps you through or that you appreciate or whatever, a scripture that goes along with your, what you're thankful for. And so that's how we're going to do it. Uh, if you really don't want to come up front, take one of, you can use one of those blue cards in the pews and during the offering, hand it in. But on the top, write Thanksgiving so they know that that's what it's for. And then write out what you're thankful for. And then we can read it off as part of the testimonies. But I would prefer you come up and, and uh, give your own testimonies. Because you're the only one that appreciates them the way uh, nobody else can. So that's, that's, the, that's what we're going to do today. So just remember, if you know, as, as you have a testimony, just come over here to this pew. And then we'll just go through. And uh, that's how we'll do it today. So... Um, I'll give a few remarks to start and then we can get going. Okay, thank you.
Our second song we're going to sing is hymn number 10, Come Christians Join to Sing. Christians join to sing song is hymn number 30. Holy God, we praise your name. now time for our call to worship. Please kneel as far as possible as we sing Spirit of the Living God.
for your goodness and your kindness. We thank you for the Sabbath day and pray that your spirit would guide all that happens today. We thank you for all the many things that you've done for each of us. We thank you for the way you've led in our lives. And we just pray that you would be with us today. In the name of Jesus, amen. Please stand as we sing together our opening hymn, number 557, Come Ye Thankful People. Okay, the children's story uh, today will be presented by Denise Kerr, and that will be followed by the offering by Stephen Cochang and uh, the morning prayer by Carlisle Greer. Thank you.
All right, good morning, everyone. Morning, boys and girls. Okay, today um, our story is gonna be two story in one. I'm gonna be starting the testimony <laughs> for one of my story, one part of my story, and the first part is gonna come from the Bible. So at school, we often listen to your story hour. Do you like listening to the Your Story Hours program? Yes, we enjoy that a lot at school. So one day we were listening to Your Story Hour and the story was about Abraham and Sarah. So Abraham and Sarah are husband and wife. They, Sarah is, was um, Abraham's half sister before they got married. And they were living in Canaan at the time, but there was a great famine and they decided that they would go to Egypt where there wasn't any famine and that way they could survive the famine. They went to Egypt, but on their way to Egypt, um, Abraham came up with an idea. He knew that Sarah was very beautiful and wherever she goes, she's always admired for her beauty. And Abraham was concerned that because Sarah was that beautiful, the king of Egypt might want her to be his wife. And in so he was um, fearful for his life because he thought the king of Egypt might kill him so that he can marry Sarah. And Abraham decided that they would lie. He told um, Sarah to tell the people in Egypt that she was only his sister. Was that a good plan? It wasn't. Lying never works out. But anyway, they went ahead with their plan. And um, when they got there, of course, Sarah being so beautiful and she told them that she was only the sister, the king of Egypt took her to, her, to his palace and was preparing her to be his wife. But um, Abraham recognizing that he, was, he had sinned and he had done a wrong thing, he prayed to God for help. Do you think God would help him? God did help him. And so God sent plagues to the Egyptians. And because that king knew God, God revealed to the Egyptian why the plague came. And so the king let Sarah go. He sent Sarah back to her husband and they were so happy. And um, that story helped me when something happened to my phone. I was visiting, I was um, subbing at a school and I left my phone there in the bathroom. And when I got back to the bathroom, there was no phone. And I'm like, what is this? I went to the office and I asked, um, asked if someone had turned in the, my phone. No, no one had turned in the phone. So, um, they said, if I had a lock on the phone, I'm like, no. Do I have a tracker on the phone? No. They're like, we cannot do anything for you. Um, but I knew who could do something for me. I remember that Abraham prayed to God and God was so good to help them get out of their trouble. So I prayed to God and asked him that that person turn in my phone. The day went by, no phone was turned in. It was a Friday, so Monday I called, no phone was turned in, but I still continued to pray. I asked um, my family to pray. I asked um, Christina to pray. <laughs> I asked um, Sister Veronica to pray, and we were praying. But by Tuesday, my husband and my sister was saying that you, you're not getting back that phone. It's time for you to be looking for a new phone. But I kept saying, no, I want my phone. And I keep talking to the Lord. And I asked the Lord to encourage my faith. And I said, Lord, you were able to help Abraham and Sarah 
uh, um, when they were in trouble and I know you can send my phone back. And I keep praying and I said, Lord, please allow that person who has my phone to be uncomfortable, just as how you send plagues to Egyptian, you can send things in their life to disturb their life so that they know that they cannot keep my phone. And I kept praying. And the week went by, it was now um, seven days or eight days after my phone was missing. I went back to that school on that Friday for, to sub there again, to substitute teach there. And after the day went by, I went to the office and I asked, did someone turn in my phone? And the secretary told me to wait a bit. Uh, she was getting in touch with a security guard. So after the security guard came and um, talked to me, asked me what kind of phone I had, I was thinking, could it be possible that it is my phone that he has? <laughs> And um, doubts start coming in my mind, like, um, this is seven days, it's impossible. But when he handed me my phone, I was like, praise the Lord, it is my phone, <laughs> you know? And I just wanna encourage us um, that when we are in difficulties or if anything happened, we can still trust the Lord and we can still pray, right? Did God help Abraham and Sarah? Can he help us today? Yeah. He did help me, even when others thought it was impossible. I knew that God could have um, bring back my phone and he did. So I'm encouraging all of us that no matter what's, um, what it is, it could be a very small thing like you not finding your pencil or a particular toy, Jesus can help us no matter what. All we have to do is trust him and believe in him that he can help and he will help us okay anyone want to pray okay but we can i got up us thank you stay please help us to to help us to start being kind and forgiving and please help us to not fight and and trust you Amen. Amen. All right, you may go back to your seat. Yes, thank you, uh, Mrs. Greer, for that testimony about our loving God who answers our prayers when we come to him faithfully and sincerely. And just in line with you know, God answering prayers, our today's offering is towards local conference advance. And so, Going in the book of Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. The Bible says that God takes care of his people. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an unexpected end. To give you an expected end. And so this is the story here of a young man. He's saying, Pastor, I feel God is calling me to enter the ministry. What should I do? The pastor responded, you need to go to college. The young man drove to the college with only enough funds to make the trip to the school. Upon arrival, he went to the admissions office and asked to enroll. The clerk at the window gave him a slip to take to the financial office to gain admission. The financial officer asked him, how much money do you have for your tuition? This young man emptied his pockets of the few coins he had left. How many of us have found ourselves in such a kind of situation? 
at one point or another, or another, we have found ourselves in difficult circumstances. Then the financial officer asked him, why are you here? He, re he replied, I believe God is calling me to become a pastor. The financial officer asked the young man to wait. She excused herself and made a few phone calls. Then she returned to explain, just a few days ago, a donor came to school and handed me a card. He said, if a student arrives at the school with no money, but has a call from the Lord, please contact me. The young man entered college in 1982 and became a minister of the gospel. If we trust our God, let us not think of where the finance is going to come from. God only calls us, go in faith. The work is his, he's going to complete it. So as we give our offerings today, let's remember that our God is calling us to do our part, but the work is his. And may the Lord bless us all. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Um, if anybody wants to bring a blue card and uh, come to the front, and we'll go ahead and uh, beseech the presence of the Lord here for us. As far as we're able to kneel. Our Father, which art in heaven, thank you so much for 
um, being with us in your presence uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, hear your children in this room, Lord. Um, we ask that we lift all the requests on the blue cards um, and that you um, open the capacity of our minds and hearts to receive you. So these we uplift towards you. Also, uh, Lord, with the um, worship service this morning, we ask that these testimonies of faith will, as well as the story sent by Sister Denise, will encourage our hearts to continue to see revelations of yourself in our lives. And Lord, as we close out this year with Thanksgiving service going to the new year, we ask that uh, we be given power to enter into a final conflict uh, before the trouble ahead of us. We ask that uh, we enter the warfare against self. Uh, Lord, it's sometimes uh, we have um, a self-pity, a self-concern. We're worried about our safety, uh, finances, our social standing, how things are at work, how we meet at church. Sometimes we harbor even hate towards our brother, our family members, maybe not openly, but inside our hearts. And we ask that uh, we have the power to dispel that because we cannot. Uh, we can see the shortcomings in others, but it, we're blind in some ways to the shortcomings of ourselves. And we uh, don't, um, without your help, we're not going to be able to have views of these things, Lord. So we ask that um, you uh, uh, highlight the way for us, Lord, so uh, we can be saved eternally at last. And with the uh, leaders in the church, Father, we ask that you hold them up because of the burdens they hold. And um, we ask to restrict the temptation to desire to be greatest. And even us here, Lord, Father, the laity, desiring to be greater than our leaders, help us to dispel who's the greatest and know that whoever is great, let them be servant, be kind and loving. Um, whosoever hate is a brother in his heart. Lord, we do not want these things. Um, uh, there's a lot of civility in this church, Lord, but also help us to have true and pure love. And now uh, turning to our family members who are not part of the household of faith, um, but still your children, we ask that this love be shown towards them. So they also can be gathered in, Lord, and we know the past could only be opened up through your power and your glory. So for these things we claim coming to the upcoming year, starting with the testimonies given and give us the hope and joy in, in receiving all these things, Father in heaven. We thank you in Jesus' holy and precious name and through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy Sabbath. Today our scripture reading will come from Psalms 100 verses 1 through 5, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lambs. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, not we ourselves. We are, we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. Have a blessed Sabbath. Okay, so as I explained earlier, it's the time for testimonies. So whoever's ready can come up here, set up here while I give a few remarks. Um, but, uh, and oh, there's also translation available. If, if somebody over there wants to uh, speak in Swahili, they, we can translate it to English. Um, just let Sabira know and she'll direct it. Um, okay, the... Uh, it's kind of interesting. I did a some word searches on thanks and thanks.
Okay, just yeah. Okay, there, there we go. Okay. Um, okay, did anybody hear what I said? <laughs> okay, uh, if you have it, if you want to translate, if you, if you, somebody needs translation, just talk to Sabira. I'm not sure. I don't remember who it was. She said the would help with that, but um, so just talk to her and she can uh, work that out. And then, uh, so today we're gonna to be talking about thanks, giving thanks to God for the things that happened to us, for the things that we know he's helped us with, for the promises that he gives. There are so many things that we have to be thankful for. In fact, everything we have to be, in all things give thanks, he says. So, um, I was looking, doing a little word search, and uh, the one of the words, a lot of a lot of words uh, in Hebrew are translated as thanks. But the main, one of the main ones is uh, yada. It's um, one of the things that means to put your hands, the praise like this, or or um, to throw. It actually means to throw or to shoot, shoot an arrow kind of interesting i know hebrew has a few words and they play multiple uh they mean multiple things but if think about it okay so some of the things that's translated into this this hebrew word is translated cast or cast out so what do we do when we uh confess we cast out our sins so it's used for confess or confession um and praise and thanksgiving so it's kind of interesting that the word itself means to cast out. So what do you do when you thank, when you thank God? Are you casting out your praise for him? Casting, you know, it's, it's, when you do these little word searches, it's kind of interesting to look at the Hebrew and see what it means. Um, okay. Now uh, go to the New, New Testament, the one that starts with Matthew. I think it's, I don't remember which slide it is, but I did a work, uh, uh, looked up in the Bible. There are 31 occurrences of Thanksgiving, the word Thanksgiving. There are 72 occurrences of the word thanks, 24 occurrences of the word thank, thankfulness one and thankful three. And so what I did is I collected all of them and we're going to show, we're going to start with the New Testament, but we'll show as you guys are giving your testimonies. He'll just kind of flip through the screens to give you something something to read and but just kind of look at it i mean it's very interesting if you go through them you see all the different ways that we should thank god all the different things we should thank him for uh and even a couple about how we shouldn't how, how the wrong way to thank or the wrong things to be thankful for um so today what we're going to do is what's called out in first chronicles 16 8 it says Oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples. So that's what we're doing today. So um, we'll start with whoever wants to start. Start with, we'll start with you. We'll go start on the end. Okay. Okay. Knows I'm grandpa. If they don't, I should. They should. I started with the kids' class when my oldest daughter was born. See, I was the wife, of, I was the husband of the piano player. So they had to take a pick who went into the kids' department. And I've been there ever since, one way or the other, for except for a few breaks. But there I learned a song that is my favorite favorite song. I know there's a lot of wonderful songs to like, but this starts like, Jesus loves me. This I know. For what? The Bible tells me so. Ellen White talked when she'd come back from vision. They said she'd start saying, dark, dark, dark because she came from a world of light that she'd just been in vision back down to this world. And I think about the fact that Jesus loved me and you, 
of course, so much that he left a world of light where he was acquainted with absolute power. He could do anything. If one of the planets was slowing down in its orbit, he moved it. If he wanted to create a new world, he spoke it. And he gave up all of that power to come down here for me. And so that song, Jesus Loves Me, makes me say, I can't understand that kind of love that he did for me, and he did it for you. And that love is beyond anything we can understand. And he gave up, not just that, but when he went back to heaven, he didn't take up all of his God power that he had before. He still has a body like ours, true as glorified. If he holds up his hand, you're still going to see those nail prints. And he gave up a power that's hard for me to understand. God can be everywhere at once. The Holy Spirit can be everywhere at once. But Jesus cannot be anymore because he chose to be like us. Why? Because Jesus loves me, this I know. Happy Sabbath, everyone. My name is Carrie Ann, and um, 2017. Uh, my sister, an eldest sibling of ours, um, came to the US. We were in Florida and um, we were working in this hotel. However, I, they had shifts and days that we uh, could choose to work. And they scheduled me to work on Sabbath. But I told them I'm a Sabbath keeper and I will not work on the Sabbath. So I, um, I asked them to allow my sister not to work on Sabbath, and they said only one of us um, was able to get the Sabbath off. So I allowed my sister to work, and I did not work on the Sabbath, and I went, um, I went back to the apartment where we were staying. And we had a friend from Jamaica as well. She's uh, from the same parish that we're from. She's actually my, one of my other elder sister. Um, schoolmate. Her name is Janice and my sister um, that I was in Florida with, her name is Heather. So the three of us um, were always together and uh, something happened at the apartment that we were staying and we weren't able to stay there anymore. And the fact that I wasn't able to work because I wasn't going to work on Sabbath, the three of us decided to leave uh, that area and go to the city, because where we're staying, it was like a country area. Uh, but where we were going would take about three hours or so on the bus. <laughs> so we, we um, drove on the bus uh, Friday morning and we went into town. Uh, we were supposed to collect a check from the office. And um, what happened is that the office was closed by the time we got there. And I only had like about $150 or so. And we had to stay in a hotel. And we stayed there the Friday evening. And we know we, we would stay there for the entire weekend or probably some more days. But we didn't have food. We didn't have nothing. We just have, you know, just like 150. And that wasn't much. And um, I remember that we could call the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And the girl um, that was with me and my sister, Jenny, her name is Janice. She wasn't Adventist, she was Pentecost. And she's like, um, what are we going to do? I know there's nobody you can trust. There's no one. So I said to her, we can call the Seventh-day Adventist church that is closest to us. So we started um, calling churches and no one was there. So I told them to wait until about 9.15 thereabouts in the morning. And we called um, one church and we got someone immediately. And I spoke to him and his name, um, Brother Anderson, I told him that we 
were visiting and we needed a ride to go to church. And once we went to the church, um, he came and picked us up and um, on our way to the church, I told him our situation, what was going on. So I told him that we were stranded and we need to get to our family member because the place that we were supposed to work, it didn't turn out um, the way we thought it would. And um, they provided lunch for us. They gave us uh, food for Sunday as well. And Monday and Tuesday, we were still in the hotel and they paid the rest of the hotel um, bill for us. And also they paid the, the fare for the, um, the transportation for the, the trip where we're supposed to go. And so um, the young lady that were with us, um, Janice, uh, she was really blessed because she said she never knew that God still has people on earth who are like this. So I'm, I'm happy that it was a testimony to her. And I pray that um, you have all um, been encouraged and that you know that you can trust the Lord to provide no matter what the situation is. Thank you. Okay, um, for those who don't know, Kevin and Sherilyn, Brian, most of you knows. I, many of you know that for the last year or so, um, we have been trying to work with my parents to get them to move, to, to sell from where they lived in Hobbs, New Mexico, to, to move up closer to us so that we could help them because we Basically everyone around them, including us and everyone else in our family, were recognizing uh, the, the, the effects of being 90, 91 years old, and they were, they were needing help. My father was the one resisting. My mother for the last couple of years had been wanting to sell, to downsize, and had been you know, but my father had been resisting. Uh, about a, six weeks ago, um, things continued to get worse and worse to the point where they didn't have a car that was working. Uh, they were depending on neighbors and church members to, to bring food to them. So it was, it was getting to be more and more uh, kind of dangerous for them. And so finally, my father agreed to to come so we we drove down and that was a miracle that was a miracle <laughs> in itself yeah that was a i miracle. said that easily but you need to understand the miracle that that was you know i've just got to interject <laughs> yes. here we went down let's see that was our fourth trip this year and when we walked in the home the holy spirit was there mom and dad were at the kitchen table eating this huge half of watermelon. I wish you could have seen them. I wish we hadn't taken a picture. They both had a little spoon and they were eating this huge half of watermelon and just enjoying it. And, but there was a different spirit in the home. Uh, Dad was calm and uh, it was just such a blessing to be there and to know that God's spirit was at work. So they uh, they agreed they they we brought them back to Wichita to look at an assisted living and uh, during that week um, things deteriorated more in in his dementia both my parents have dementia and uh, were very forgetful and so forth it reached the point where he needed to be admitted into the hospital into a general psychiatry hospital and was there for three weeks until we were able to find assisted living where both of them could move into. So both of them are now here with us in assisted living, in memory care. And that's, I mean, that's all of the things related to that were a miracle in itself. Well, once they were there, then we needed to go back to, to New Mexico, to Hobbs, to try and close out their estate, uh, home, uh, he's a mechanic, he's had a shop, they have unbelievable amounts of things that needed to be dealt with, paperwork, um, and so forth. 
but God provided in multiple ways over that seven to 10 days in getting together all the personal items, uh, being able to get, get an estate sale going, and, um, and also in that 10 days, finding a buyer for their home is just unbelievable. And just one little thing that gives you an idea of what, how God, we were multiple times praying throughout the day for very specific things and being, and seeing God answer those, those things. Before we went down to, to close out their estate, Sherilyn had said, you know, the car's not always starting. And um, so I, I drove it some, started, it seemed to start okay. So we drove down multiple times started it we had to go back and forth between new mexico and lubbock texas to get certified copies of titles for vehicles to sell uh, just down the street from them is a mechanic who has been willing to work on all the various vehicles that needed to be brought back into shape they had deteriorated wouldn't start he was helping so i wanted to pull in to talk to him. So I drove into to his uh, little shop area, turned the car off, went and talked to him about it, got back in the car, nothing. The starter died just as I drove into his place. He came out, looked at it, found a starter in three hours, had it fixed for us. It was just God was providing so many different ways. So we have much, much to be thankful for over the last six weeks. The one other thing we're thankful for is that um, our daughter and son-in-law are here from Denver. They moved to Denver. They're closer to us. Uh, they've been married for eight years and uh, just had their anniversary. And in those eight years, because they lived in California, we have never been able to have a Thanksgiving meal together with them. This time we did, first time in eight years of marriage. So we are just very thankful. Oh, I just want to say to God, uh, Kevin said, said a lot of things. There's so many details. We started writing down all the different things that God has been doing for us. And we just, um, we ran out of paper actually. Well, where we, when we were down there in New Mexico and I, and I or ran out of time, I guess at the time, but you know, so many little things that God took care of our needs. And, and just to think that right next door to mom and dad's home, where we were working every day, working on things in the home and, and getting, getting their personal things uh, out for them. Uh, various uh, past their pastor of their church lives right next door to where they live and so we could stay with pastor ken and just walk over in the morning and then their other neighbor used to work for the police department both of them actually the husband and wife and they were there ready to help us too and they um dennis was always doing his uh morning and evening watches on the house and they were keeping, they were just keeping a good eye on everything. And then to have this mechanic down the street, I mean, I'm just so grateful for neighbors and the neighbors that were there to help with just really whatever we needed. Um, and so they were, they were always available, so helpful. So uh, it just brought home to me too, the joy of having wonderful neighbors that are, are ready to help you with, with so many things. And and food, you know, Pastor Ken is a, a pastor of what, three churches, mm -hmm. three churches. Um, I think it's Roswell and Lovington and Hobbs, New Mexico. And at the other churches in Lovington and Roswell, they have their fellowship meals. He'd come home with these big styrofoam, you know, containers full of food. And that's what we ate all during the week. <laughs> and it was wonderful because we didn't, nobody had time to cook. And so it was wonderful to just, you know, open the fridge. We had wonderful food every day and we could share together. Pastor Ken was wonderful because he's been there through thick and thin with mom and dad and helping them and being available and understanding what's going on in their home that, that helped us to know what to do in regards to things that still needed to be taken care of in the home. 
And, and then for this gentleman and his wife that are interested in the home, that's a whole nother story. We don't want to take, take all your time, but, but God just, um, you know, because they were thinking of leaving that area for the last, I think almost 10 years. And it's like the Lord is showing them that they needed to stay in Hobbs, but they didn't know why. And then when mom and dad's home came available, they were so interested and, and they want to purchase the home. So we, we just thank God over and over and over so for all he's doing. We have tried Romans 8, 28, and it's true. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Thank you. Mimi naweza mimi naweza kuwasalimu kwanza watumishi wa Mungu. I want to uh, greet all of you saints of God. Asante na shukuru Mungu kwa mambo makuu ambayo alionitendea. I want to thank God for everything great that he has done to me. Wakati mimi nilipata hii fursa ya kuja huku uh, when I got an opportunity to come over here, uh, the first thing I prayed for is to how to get a good church. So I kept on asking myself, will I ever get a church? Uh, then I gave, I, I, I called my friend over there. I called my friend Angelani and asked, uh, So I have been uh, chosen to come over to the United States and the Lord has blessed me with that and I am glad. Then uh, I asked about the church and she said there's a church and she's and I said uh, praise God for that. So thank God for that. And when I came here, I really saw uh, great things that God had done to me. It was on the fourth day. I was uh, just cooking for my children. Then I saw um, a big wind that came. Then I started praying. And I prayed. Then I told the children, please go call the pastor. I'm seeing bad things happening. And the children, everywhere they went, they didn't get uh, anybody. Buzz. So I continued to pray, but I felt that I was being choked. I couldn't breathe. And, and a few moments passed by and my husband came. And I saw he started praying. I didn't recognize what was happening at that time until I, I, I was not breathing so well, I couldn't realize what was happening. Uh, it was at 5 p.m. Then I regained my consciousness at uh, five uh, at eleven p.m. 
Then they asked me what was happening. What was happening to you? Then I said, uh, our God is there. Then after the Sabbath, uh, on, on after the Sabbath, then later on Tuesday, uh, that I was told that you, my, my journey is almost there. Then I said, praise God. Then I asked myself, you see, my body is weak. What will happen? Then I say that I wouldn't be well enough for me to come over to the United States. Then we continue to pray to God. And uh, the people of God came to pray for me. All the church members, the singers came to pray for me. And uh, on the day of uh, on the day of the journey to come over to the United States, they took me to hospital. Okay, and uh, she was saying about the weight, and the doctor told her that she was the, the she had attained the right weight, and if she came over, that uh, her weight will be continuously okay. Wakweli. And when they were coming over to the United States, everyone kept on saying that these people will not go, they will come back. And when we reached, uh, we continued to pray. Then uh, she continued praying and praising God and asking God to help with the journey situation so that she may not feel sick again and so that just the Lord will continue to be with, with her. Kila siku napima, basi pressure inapanda. And uh, they they measured my pressure, my blood pressure, but it was high. And when it reached a point where I was supposed to come, I was told that my blood pressure was okay. Now it was going down. And well, that is how I got my opportunity to come over. And I thank God for all the Christians. Are uh, those who welcomed me. And you clothed me. And I ate so well because of the word of God. And you 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 showed me with all these kinds of blessings. People of God, be blessed. And may you continue with love. Yes. Yes, um, and um, even if you're seeing me like this, I'm not completely well, but I thank God for how far he has brought me. If you see me, continue to pray for me because God is good. And may God bless you.
Mungu alionitendea alisema kwamba muomba Mungu na Mungu atakusaidia. I want to thank God for this day uh, as my thanksgiving prayer uh, to thank him for what he has done for me. Na kitabu ambao mimi nilikuwa nasoma soma ni and the book Zaburi the book I wanted to I continue to pray is Psalms. Kuomba, na, na soma Zaburi when I want to pray sala tatu I I use the book of Psalms 3 tatu kuanzia pale mstari wa 1 na kushuka chini 3 going downwards na Zaburi 4 and Psalms 4 kuanzia pale na kushuka pale na kushuka chini from that point going down jise ayubu alikuwa anaomba na mwambia Mungu Mungu watesi wangu wamesha kuwa wengi and the way job job used to pray that uh, my um rudia watesi wangu wamesha kuwa wengi na ni wengi my enemies have been uh, so many and there are many ukimtegemea Mungu na Mungu atakusaidia asante kwenu na asante kwa Mungu kwa makuna maajabu ambayo unitendea amina amen if we continue to trust in god he will he, he has done a lot of good things for me and he will do good things for you too amen The Lord is good. And all the time. I want to thank God. For this week, uh, whatever God, great things he has done for me. I know some of you don't know my husband. I, if you know, I don't know if you know him. When I was going to work, I was going to Johnson's. It was on the first day at five. I was going to work and my husband took me to work. We were three in a vehicle. Uh, we, we had just turned on the exit on our way to work from the highway. And my husband knocked three vehicles. Uh, we really had uh, a rough time on the highway. Uh, that when he was driving, he kept on hitting other vehicles. He hit one vehicle and another vehicle. That we continue to thank God that even that, even if that happened, all the three of us, we are still living. And there is nobody who um, got hurt very much, got hurt. I thank God because I called my children and they were really sad about the situation. But my husband, it has it had reached a point where he had gone to he was taken to jail. But uh, he didn't stay there for uh, 30 hours, 30 minutes, yeah, 30 minutes, and uh, he was back home. And I thanked God for that. But please continue to pray for me because the case has not yet, is not yet over. 
He has been given a court date of 24th this year, uh, uh, 24th December. He has a court date. Yeah, that uh, may you keep that in prayer so that even as he continues to go to the court, that uh, the Lord is going to help the situation. I don't have much to say, but everything I live for God. And I also want to thank God that I also caused an accident and I was able to call Mr. Omari. And he really blessed me with encouragement and I thank God for that. Amen. 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 Um, uh, praise God, all you saints. Uh, my name is Angelani Bilombele. I stand here to give um, uh, to, to give a testimony. Uh, in, in a testimony for my daughter. It was on the seventh month. Charlotte was going to work. Charlotte She was going to work in the morning. She she is doing a uh, school work. When he when she was going to work. Uh, she saw somebody in the morning who was following her. Uh, she, uh, somebody was um was 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 following her like um she was running, but we thank God that she was able to overcome this person. She defeated the person. It was uh, on a Sabbath, Friday, 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 uh, preparation day. She got her check and went to the bank. So this person actually noticed her and he was following uh, her from morning. When she went to the bank, she went and withdrew $600 and she wanted to go back home. And uh, at the behind the bank, there was a person who was totally disguised with mask and all that. And he removed a knife. And he he sliced um, the her daughter's neck. Wait, he didn't slice. He put the, 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 the knife on the, on the neck and then told the, child, the girl that this is your last day. That have been sent, I want to kill you today. And if you make any noises, you're going to die. So my Read this, read this letter. He had a letter. 
Toto akaanza soma barua. And the and the daughter started reading the letter. Umaliza kusoma barua. When he when she finished reading the letter, akanyanganya barua. And the man snatched the letter back. Ni pezo pesa. Give me this money. Akaanza hisabu. Then the guy, the the person uh, started counting the money. Na kisi kiko kwenye shingo ya mtoto. And then the knife still on her neck. Akasema leo siku yako ni ya mwisho utakufa leo. That today you it's your last day you're going to die. Mtoto akashindwa la kusema na kulalamika juu alinaambiwa ukilalamika sasa hivi na kuua. And and her daughter was in a bad situation. She didn't know if she screamed what will happen to her and the man kept on insisting that uh, she was going to he was going to kill her. Lakini kwa miujiza ya Mungu but by the power of god wakati ambapo anachukua pesa na zihesabu when he was taking the money and counting kumetokea mtu pembeni and suddenly a person came from the corner akamuliza hicho kiso ni cha nini and the person asked this man Uyum what toto, is this knife for huyo mtoto amekufanya nini and what has this girl done to you akasema mtoto leo anakufa that to, he, the man replied this Today I'm going to kill this girl. And something surprisingly, he the man now left the girl and turned to the man who was holding the knife. And then uh, the, he the man uh, sorry let me retract. He 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 left the girl and decided to to attack the man who came to who was asking uh about the girl earlier and he started fighting with him lakini cha ajabu huyu mtu akamwambia sasa wewe ndio unaweza kufa baada yangu but the other man who was coming to save the, the girl told this other man that you know what it is me it's not me who is going to die today but you akaingia kwenye mfuko wake and he took he, he got into his his um his pants akiwa na mshitu wake mimi nina bunduki sasa mimi ndio nitakuua and then the, the the man who was coming to who was asking about the girl said you know i i i he pretended that he had a gun and he said that today i'm going to kill you amesikia uoga mpaka kakimbia and the man who had the knife thought it was true and decided to run away mtoto akabakia and the, my daughter stayed lakini akuchukua pesa zote alichukua dolari 300 and the man who had the knife ran away with 200 dollars he didn't take every money all, all the money lakini alimchukua nyumbani ule mtu mpaka kapeleka mtoto nyumbani and the man who uh, appeared took the girl home nimeshukuru sana Mungu ana miujiza mingi kati ya sisi wanadamu and i want to thank god that Um, he really has a lot of good things for us powerful things for all of us amongst us ejapokuwa mungu anapenda watu wote lakini anapenda wa kristo wake na tutapewa miaka mingi kadri ya jinsi tunavyomfata mungu that uh, i know god loves all of us and specifically he loves his his children who believe in him he will give us more life if we continue to work for him na lingine namshukuru Mungu ni ndani napumua na na familia yangu yote tungali tunapewa pumzi ya uwai mwaka mzima mpaka kipindi cha mwisho wa mwaka tupo wazima and at this time again I want to thank God with my family that we are alive we are breathing uh, he has taken care of us throughout from uh, the beginning of the year up to this time Uo wote ni upendo wa Mungu. And all that is God's love. Na mtoto mwenyewe ana neno moja la kuongea. And my daughter has something uh, to say. Happy Sabbath church. She have said anything uh, she have said everything but I just uh, I just want to share a verse in the Bible. It's James James chapter uh, James James chapter 4 uh, verse 8 says draw near to god and he will draw near to us so the more we draw near to him the more he draw near to us amen hiyo ni shukrani katika jina la Yesu Kristo amen and that is a thank in the name of the lord jesus christ amen
Ndabasuhuje mwese itorero ry'Imana Mahoro y'Imana bane namwe Is it working? Yeah. Good morning everyone. God's peace be with you all here. Nitwa Mukashema Eugene. My name is Eugene. Ndashima Imana cyane rero urukundo rwayo n'imbaraga zayo. Yakomeje kurinda twese nkuko twahuriye hano itorero ry'Imana izina ryayo rihagucyubahira. I'm thankful that we all got here and I'm thankful that everybody is living in peace in this sinful world God's love be raised. Icyo nshimira Imana rero cyane twagize mfite umusazo wange wakoze impanuka what I'm thankful especially is that my uncle got an accident. They were on their way to work, seven people in a van. I just, the car just flipped over the highway and two people has died and my son just alive but my brother that's my uncle he got in serious injuries now he's in hospital ndashima imana rero cyane icyo giye akoze impanuka tariki 2024 zo kwa karindwi muri uyu mwaka i'm thankful that he's still alive he got in an accident on the 27th this year Yamaze amezi abiri atumva atabona atareba twarapuye yamaso tuzingwe yavuye mu mwuka yarapuye He spent two months in hospital without talking without hearing just none of that Ariko kugimbaraga z'Imana ubu ngubu umuntu amugeraho arareba akumva akavuga gake ariko noneho akakumenya akamenya kwa mugezeho ibyo yeye nibyo mbigushimira Imana muri uyu mwanya but because of God's power, it's been a couple months. Now he can talk. If you get to him, he can know who you is. Now he can talk to everybody that gets to him. I'm thankful for that. My son that was in a car can stand back there so you guys can see him. He was he was with them in a car, but he only spent three days in the hospital and he got out. The Kindun Chimirima, Nano, come to Gira Haramatera and to Gira Arikwa Gatatu. And I'm thankful for you guys giving us the Wednesday to praise God every evening. Ndashimira cyane umukozi w'Imana wa Mari na Anti badufasha buri gihe bakadufasha ku ijambo ry'Imana and I'm also thankful for Omari and Anti for helping them to preach them and teaching them God's words Tuba turi mu mihati yacu ya buri cyumweru ariko iyo bigejeje kuri wa gatatu njya numva nejejwe cyane nuko tugiye kongera tugahura tukibuka ijambo ry'Imana Everyone is busy these days but I'm grateful that we all have to meet on Wednesdays so we can pray God. There's a lot of things that I'll be grateful for, but without further ado, I'll read in Jeremiah. Jeremiah 30 verse 3. Jeremiah 30 verse 3 says, For behold, the days are coming, says the Lord. 
imana ishimwe cyane ndashimira itorero ikomeza kutuba hafi ndashimira imana cyane kubwi imbaraga zayo ikomeza kuduha tugakomeza tukaza tukumva ijambo ry'imana buri wese rero ajya tabaza imbaraga y'imana ikomeze tubane idukomeze kandi kuyoborere kubwi ijambo ryayo ritugeraho buri munsi nibyo basabira nange nisabira mu izina rya Yesu just making the story short you guys if you have time you can read Jeremiah 30 verse 3 but I'm grateful for a lot of things that God has done for me. And you guys can keep praying for my uncle to just God's heal him and just heal alive. And you were surprised that he was alive because we didn't think he was going to make it through. And I'm thankful for you guys praying. You guys have been praying for us. Just keep praying for us as usual. Thank you, guys. Have a great day. Amen. What? One more? Okay. I have to write things down. I too, I'm dealing with a situation with my parents that I'm really thankful for. I'm thankful for both my mom and my dad. I'm thankful for an aunt that taught me how to, taught me and my sister how to help take care of our parents. Um, I'm really thankful for spies. <laughs> I have um, my dad's pastor, the um, people that care, that are at the senior center. I've gotten a couple phone calls this week from them about dad's health. Um, and over time I have, and my sister has been away from her home because my niece had an accident and she's okay, she's healing from that. Um, but I'm really thankful that there are people that are friends that are good friends to my parents that are helping us take care of my parents. And my dad has made some choices this week that we're gonna have to work on. So I'm thankful for that. I really am thankful that my dad and I can talk about things that we need to do. My family has taught me growing up, I'm very thankful that I have a Bible that is in English, and that each of you have the opportunity to have a Bible that is in your language. Um, my family was from, my dad's family is from Czechoslovakia, and that's one of the first places that they had Bibles in the language of the people. Um, and our family Bible is in a museum, but I'm really thankful for that. And a couple of weeks ago, I have the rest of the story about the two little, about the family that wrote the Bible app for pregnancy. They sent me, I sent the elephants, remember the two elephants I had sitting up here? I, they sent me the picture of the elephants because I sent them to the family and all the stories that I told here. And um, they sent me a picture of the two little boys, the one who is three, Lincoln, who's doing very well and no evidence of the trisomy 13 that the medical test said he would probably have. She said he's doing very well and he takes his elephant everywhere with him. And his little brother, who's about six months old, just has kind of a confused look, she says most of the time on his face because he's looking at the world around him and it's a new place. But everything that sticks out on the elephant is chewable. So that's what he does is chew on the elephant. Um, she also sent me, in the letter, she sent me two books that are associated with those elephants that were associated with the person who made the elephants. They go with some books. And I'll have to go back and bring the letter another time. But they're books that, that tell the reason that you're here, that we're thankful that you're here um, because children are about such a special gift. I look at the families here in this church and I'm thankful that I can understand the testimonies that we had this morning. I am very thankful for that. Those of all of you who translate for us, I wish that 
And I'm thankful that someone is translating that you can understand my testimony this morning. To have an international church like this is such a blessing. Such a blessing. Something I remember going, I visited a church in Denver years ago, and it was an international church. And I thought, this is really interesting. I've never been in anything like this. And I didn't have to go anywhere now. It came to me, and I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for all my brothers and sisters that are here. I'm thankful that we had a pastor that has been that lived somewhere else and has come and helped make this possible, that it was a welcoming and taught us all how to be welcoming. So I am very thankful today. I'm thankful that I had time with my dad yes, this week. I'm thankful for the challenges. And this morning, I'm really thankful for what I decided to do last year in my devotions. I've tried for several years to keep up with everybody on whatever everybody's doing, whether it's reading this or reading that. And this year, I just decided to read through the Bible again myself. And I made it to 2 Samuel 22 from Genesis. <laughs> and the Bible is a um, chronological Bible. So there's more than just where I'm at because I'm jumping back and forth between Psalms. But David has a psalm of thanksgiving in 2 Samuel 22. And verse 2 says, well, verse 1 says, And David spoke unto the Lord the words of this song in the day that the Lord had delivered him out of the hand of all his enemies and out of the hand of Saul. And he said, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. The God of my rock, in him will I trust. He is my shield the horn of my salvation, my high tower, my refuge, my savior. Thou savest me from violence. I will call on the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. I know there are many, many, many stories here of the journeys that we have all taken. But I am thankful that we have a God who is a strong tower, a rock, a shield for us. I'm very thankful today for that. How many think that the testimony meeting is one of the most precious meetings? How many were blessed today by the testimonies? Probably a lot more than me standing up here preaching. So... Um, we'll go ahead and have the, uh, I'll go ahead and do the benediction. Then when we get done with the song, we can just, the ushers will usher us out. Father, we thank you so much for how you work in each of our lives. We thank you for these testimonies that remind us that you do work in each of our lives in different ways. Some dramatic, like the, the young lady that was, uh, attacked, some just in um, taking care of your parents. Lord, we pray that you would help us to each see all the different ways that you bless us, that you're with us, and that you guide us and protect us. We thank you, and we come in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay. I have a song, Great Is Thy Faithfulness, Jessica. So um, I'm just happy that the Lord is not overwhelmed. You know, we may get overwhelmed just hearing people's story, you know, and how the Lord has led. But I'm just thankful that we serve a God that is able to take care of all of our needs and um, nothing flusters him. So great is his faithfulness towards us. Hymn number 100. Oh, everyone, please stand. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> 